Now Nicodemus takes care of everything, including looking at the current president, which is George Washington. While I'm gone, I want you to feed the prisoners. Mm -hmm. You might make a run through town, check these cowboys for guns, and then finish this paperwork Judge Parker wanted. You got it. Isn't sweeping in the West kind of like wiping your ass before you take a shit? I mean, like, what's the fucking point? You know, like, it's going to be dirty in two seconds. Can I help you? I think so. I'm from Ellsworth, Kansas. The town council sent me to find an able man to fill the marshal's post. From what I saw last night, you're the man for the job. So now this guy's making up fake jobs so he can get Nicodemus to go to uh, Kansas or some shit. I don't know, that's a death sentence in itself, isn't it? Like, hey, I made a fake job. Take, take my word for it. And then when you get there, you're like, shit, I didn't make it because newsflash, I died. Boom, Indians. Boom, snakes. Boom, union reps. Boom, bison with fucking rabies that are basically mutants. Boom, got cold one night and I didn't have any aspirin. Uh, boom. I had to drink myself to death because I went to Kansas and it sucked. I saw you in action last night. Gunter gets all the credit, but you were the one who spotted the man with the gun under the table. Yeah, you were uh, you were the guy that killed the other guy with the back of the gun. That's called law enforcement. How much does a deputy make here? Fifty dollars a month. We're paying 125. No, oh, but there's no chance for you to move up the ladder here. Not as long as Gunter's here. Oh, he's all right. Average, I guess. But you're the one that makes him look good. You make him look good. True. Nicodemus, probably most handsome out of all of them. Definitely most handsome. Look at him. I mean, blacksmith. He just looks like he's going to fuck you like he's a wild Mustang and just fucking just fill you like you're a Bavarian cream pie. Give you some, give you bruises on the back. <laughs> but Nicodemus, no. Pour you some wine. Have like a, a garlic bread, garlic butter. He put on bread. He made it himself. And then he like listens about your day. Asks about it. And then it just like hit it just hits the right spots, you know? What are you gonna feed us? Oh, shut up. I'll give you your dinner when I'm good and ready. What are you gonna feed us? How about butter my pistol again, you fuck? Well, where have you been? When is this, when is this bar open? Like, 9 a.m.? Because that's awesome. Chairs aren't even put down. Maybe you should fucking open the bar before you talk shit about some guy that's helping you with like some type of gambling ring and killing all or getting rid of excuse me killing or getting rid of all of the fucking marshals and the, their sidekicks you really think you're gonna get rid of gunner this fat idiot the bartender slash owner of the bar slash quote unquote gambling expert he may be the biggest idiot in the show, and he's up against a glue sniffer. You know what P stands for? Well, P's can't stand by themselves. You well, see, we try to make them stand, but they fall right over. This guy sniffs glue. <laughs> also, these guys are pretty open about their plans in, like, the most public spot in town. I mean, might as well just say it out in the open, like, out in the road. Like right where people are walking around, just hey, so how's the plan of getting rid of all the marshals? Oh, pretty good. Three quarters of the way done. That's the same old slop you fed us at noon. You better be glad you're just getting to eat. You better be glad you got a marshal with a quick gun to protect you, deputy. I don't hide behind nobody. That's right, Nicodemus. Fuck up those prisoners. Nicodemus, can I talk to you for a minute? I'm kind of busy right now, Elmer. Oh, so you're in on it too, huh? 
What are you talking about? You're trying to cheat me out of my share of reward money. Now, it may just be me, but Elmer looks like the town gives him an allowance on his money. Like, he makes money, but the town gets to give him a certain amount each week or a month. But then he he gets to spend it how he wants, but it can't be too much. Because otherwise, he looks like type that would spend it on like making his sex toys out of like horse intestines or something. He just looks like a guy that has like an intimate real, real relationship with a horse. Like when it rains, he like dances with it. When he's just like wearing underwear and that's it. And boots, and then the rest of the town's like, yeah, that's that's Elmer, but he makes damn good horseshoes. You're trying to cheat me out of my share of reward money. Reward money? Don't act like you don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Maybe the marshal's trying to keep it all for himself. I don't know about that. Marshal Gunner takes all the reward money for himself. And it ain't right, Nicodemus. He ought to share it with us. This is just like when me and my friends were fighting over my wife, and then uh, we decided to have a threesome. But then uh, she changed her mind, and she just wanted to have a twosome, but just uh, uh, she left me out. Hey, Elmer, where you been? I've been giving Nicodemus a piece of my mind. And don't you think for a minute you got one red cent of reward money coming, coward. Coward? What are you talking about? Coward? He's a barber in a western town. You, if somebody didn't like their haircut, you know what they do? They fucking shoot you. Leave you right in the middle of the road and go, hey, there's a new job opening up. It's owning this barber shop because this barber fucked up my hair and I fucking killed him. Why, you ignorant brute. You can't even put your boots on the right foot without help. There's reward money coming for nailing that cowboy. I'm just as deserving as a fool blacksmith with a third grade education. Oh, shit. You got the guts to bike up those words? I've got the intestinal fortitude and the intelligence to whip a brute like you. Oh my God! You put up or shut up, Mr. Smart and Pint. Oh, fuck yeah. Two deputies fighting the street. This fight fucking sucks. What in the world's going on here? Oh, this imbecile called me a coward. He is a coward. He made fun of my education. This fight was the most interesting thing that happened this town since those fucking three guys got killed last year. I think I know how all this got started. Now come on with me. Well, I wonder what that was all about. My scenes are coming up. Even quicker than I expected. You know what? This bartender is this bartender. A very accurate interpretation of a bartender. A hates cops. No patience. Doesn't believe in others or himself. It's like a fucking looking in a mirror. We gotta talk, Bill. Boys, we can talk later. There's a shooting over the silver dollar. We need to talk now. Let's have it. There's some things here we ain't rightly happy about. Like what? Like you keeping that reward money for yourself when others deserve it just as much as you. And you keeping us in the background like we're not capable of doing the marshal's job as well as you. We do all the work, you get all the credit. We're tired of that. Yeah. You get all the credit for these 20 people in town. I'm finished in dry gulch. I'm gonna take that city marshaling job up Nailsworth. Well, I'm done too. I ain't working for no man that's gonna cheat me out of reward money. Count me out too. I'm a better man than you give me credit for. I'm, I'm done. But hey, listen. I'm done being a deputy for you but listen i still own a business 
And I got a job just across the street. So uh, this is going to be weird, but I'm going to be seeing you a lot because I'm right across the street. So best of luck. I accept your resignations. But there's a thing or two I want you boys to know. I'm going to start with you, Nicodemus. You are good enough to be a head man. I've watched you work. But you're not the head man here. And the things you're doing are what you agreed to when you took this job. Now, as for Ellsworth, I don't know who you've been talking to. That job's already filled. Tom Carter there's been a marshal for five years. He was two days ago because he sent me a wire. Are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. It's part of the paperwork you're supposed to be working on. Nicodemus, you missed paperwork? A proof job wasn't even available. You fucking stupid-ass asshole idiot. Lefty, the reason I've never put you out front is because I know you don't see so well. I've never questioned your courage or your ability. But I know your night vision's not good, and I didn't want to put you in a place where somebody would shoot at you and you couldn't see who it was. Lefty, you're too blind and fat to put you up front without it looking like you're just a human shield for me. A fucking idiot. And Elmer, what reward money are you talking about? Reward for that cowboy that I nailed at the saloon last night. There wasn't any reward posted for him. He's just a 17-year-old kid. This is the first brush he's ever had the law. I got a wire from his mama this morning begging us to have mercy on him. Elmer, you're a dumb fuck. You really think that this kid... Oops. ...is a criminal with a bounty. Shut up. You blacksmith better than you, uh, police officer. But you got it all wrong. And if you think I don't appreciate you, you're on there too. I couldn't do my job without you. Maybe I don't say it enough, but I'll say it again. Thank you. Thanks for every time you've uh, stood beside me, behind me, for me. Behind me, beside me, in me. That's right, Nicodemus, you fucking, you beautiful man. God, when I drink red wine, I get so fucking horny. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, fuck. Shit's about to go down. He's alone. Marshal Gunner. There's a law against wearing guns in town. Some of you men are armed. You bring your weapons up here and lay them on the bar in plain sight, and I'll take them to jail. You can pick them up when you're ready to leave town. Hey, you remember that law I talked about about 24 hours ago? Yeah, I'm back for that. Also, this guy, this guy. Is supposed to be an assass uh, assassin. Yeah. Wow. Stealthy. How do you not see him? He's like a walking camouflage. Everyone else is still listening to Marshall talk about these laws. Except this fucking lizard person creeping around. Look at him. He's like lanking around. Just staring at him. How would you not notice this guy just staring at you? You won't be angry if... Uh... I decide to keep my gun. Thought you were a law and order man, Mr. Malloy. Oh, but I am. But not your kind of law and order. Take off your gun belt, Mr. Malloy. No way, Marshal. Two guys dead. Fuck yeah, Nicodemus. I'm the brain. And I'm the idiot. And you're dead meat. Boy, it's not Just wait, wait a minute. Let me... What do you want us to do with him, Marshal? We'll lock him up, deputies. Also, what is he getting locked up for? Like, for trying to, like, tear friends apart? I didn't know that was an American law. Sorry, Bill. We list that lion tin horn and the devil. <laughs> Hey, 
Thanks for coming in here. You need to thank me. That's what a deputy does. Lawrence Marshall's back. Also, Nicodemus and Marshall are having this nice conversation at the end. This guy at the back is just like, yeah, that's that body. Hey, somebody should take care of that. And his friend's like, yeah, I know. It's not my job, but somebody should take care of that. Then, uh, at the end of every episode, a uh, preacher guy who has a lust for the Wild West and being town marshal, instead of being a uh, preacher, lets us know about what lesson we need to learn. So uh, maybe we should just take a listen. When discord comes into a person's life, very seldom does it come as a full-grown plant. It starts out as a tiny little seed. Little words here and there are designed to drive friends apart, to separate families. Be careful that you don't plant seeds of discord. The Bible tells us that sowing seeds of discord among brothers is one of the worst things that a person can do. It's as bad as murder. So don't commit that sin. Don't let discord bring destruction to your life. You know what's as bad as murder? Separating brothers' trust. Yeah, that sounds about right. You should be locked up for life trying to separate brothers. <sighs> That's it for this one. <clears throat> I just killed two bottles, so I need to go across the street and get more wine because the government took my car because I planted seeds of discord by telling them I would not drive a car after a ball of absinthe. Uh, yeah. <laughs>